I think I was really influenced by what happened to the Beatles. So I saw that sort of trend of this arc of uh, a, a, basically a boy band that then turned into an artistic revolution. So that, that really sparked my interest in music because it, it became something else. It wasn't just this utilitarian sort of pop thing. It could be anything. And uh, I think that was you know, one source of, of influence for me. We have so much music in our catalogs that we provide a service that allows our clients to contact our music directors at any time and request a search. So this is valuable because our clients are under time crunches and they often are looking for something very specific or unusual and our, our music directors are available to uh, initiate that search and to find that piece of music and then actually uh, provide it for them as well. Well, John has been with the company for many years, and he is uh, very, very well versed in the catalog and styles of music. And we also have regular meetings about, as well uh, with Christina, on trends and genres as well. But he's very uh, knowledgeable about all of the catalogs that we have. So this is thousands and thousands of, uh, of copyrights. and. He's, um, he brings all of that years of experience in dealing with clients and their deadlines and knowing exactly where all the music might be in the catalog. He brings that to the table, so he's able to um, really turn things around very quickly and help clients find things very quickly. Um, Christina is uh, much newer, but she brings a, a, a slightly different perspective because she's with our film and TV division. A lot of what she does is uh, and and it has to do really with where she comes from. She's uh, very very um, involved with the music scene in LA. She's uh, on top of the current trends. So she also consults our creative department on things that we might want to produce or what she's being asked for. So that is a, a really valuable piece as well. And then her function is very similar to John's in that. She knows the catalogs very well and will find music and, and send, them, send it to clients in the form of pitches uh, for just about anything they need. And, and uh, John also works on the film and TV side, but she's really focused on that area and it's a, it's a little bit different animal. And a lot of uh, source music and songs and uh, replacements of soundtracks uh, is, is really what we do with film and TV and she's, uh, she's uh, very good at that. We produce music. We, we're not just a, a rep firm, and we don't just um, really sort of license music from other writers to then be sort of a manager and take a fee. So we are actually creators of copyrights, and we uh, we commission a lot of artists around the country and around the world to to create music for us. So we have another division called Middle Eight Music, which is a custom music division. So we'll oftentimes. Uh, recommend that the client have something produced custom like we did with uh, NBC in Boston for their uh, custom uh, TV uh, theme music. They were launching a new NBC affiliate and they wanted a theme and package created specifically for that, uh, for that launch. So we did that for them through Middle Eight Music. But Middle Eight Music will also take a piece of music in our library and we've customized that to client projects before as well. Uh, so that's, that's really where that, that sort of power of the whole first com uh, universe comes into play is that we've got uh, literally thousands and thousands of copyrights but if the client wants something very specific or they like a piece of music that's maybe not quite there, we can take that and then customize it for their project. So one thing that we, we do is that the customization of our library tracks are, are usually done uh, at no charge or at a very minimal charge. So uh, oftentimes we will have, uh, we'll have multi-tracks or stems available and then we have our own production team that will take this and customize it. So it's really part of the service of being a client of First Com Music. Um, and then of course we can work with budgets. It, it uh, really depends on the project but it's, uh, it's one benefit we have because we have so many different sources of, of talent and artists that we're used to uh, working with just about any budget out there. Right now I think there's a 
there's an influx of, uh, of technology companies that are really great at technology, but they're not really music companies. So they're, they're aggregating music from a lot of different sources, and uh, most of the time, I would say the majority of the time, they don't own the music. And they're really turning um, found music or, or maybe artists that they've found and they've recruited, and they're, they're, they're giving them an outlet for uh, putting their music out there, which is great but they don't actually create anything. They really kind of depend on uh, more or less a, a, a crowdsourcing sort of model to provide their music. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but then when you have a company that is really a creative company, first and foremost, you're going to get a much better uh, piece of music. You're going to get a much better product. It's going to be more creative. Uh, the Sonics, um, the, uh, the, the the tech specs on the music are, are going to be superior. So um, that helps us quite a bit and since we have a stake in it, since we've created it, you're, you're really going to get the benefit of the whole company. And so that's mostly, I think that's the difference of um, a lot of the other libraries. And then it allows us, because we own the music and we have studios, to actually customize that music as well.